with the market right here on 80 now. We are uh, down about almost 100 points right now for the Nifty Futures and the breath as well is starkly in the red. All sectors in the red as we speak right now with fertilizer, of course, taking the huge uh, knock given that UPL on last check is now down 14% on the futures as we speak. But let's uh, shift focus and let's talk about what's happening within the PSU space. Uh, why PSU banks and the entire PSU segment has been a buzz and what you sh as an investor should now be doing. Welcoming on board then Sanjay Parekh. Uh, he joins in, Senior Fund Manager at Nippon India Mutual Fund. Sanjay, hi, good morning, good to have you on the show. First, uh, what's making the PSU pack so attractive? Is it that they were they were trading at deep discounts and hugely under-owned? Yeah, good morning, uh, Aisha and Abha. So, essentially, um, uh, you know, they were always undervalued um, on, if you compare with Nifty on price to book, price earning, EV EBITDA, they're almost at a 60% discount. Uh, if you look at ROEs of Nifty versus this basket, um, I'm talking of the CPSE basket, and we can have, that's true broadly of the whole PSUs. Um, uh, the, it is less, but like, on 23, we were expecting 12% ROE for the basket versus Nifty at 14%. Uh, in dividend yields, uh, Nifty at is at a 1% yield, while this basket is at a dividend yield of 8% on FI20 uh, dividends. So, but that was not enough. What we saw the change and the catalyst was the commitment uh, from the government, uh, A, to not persistently giving supply through the CPSC route. Second, very clearly articulating the need for uh, uh, the right payout policy, uh, focused capital location, and this is work in progress. So I'm saying not saying that we have reached the ultimate destination, but the clear uh, uh, you know, importance of all these needs, uh, clearly not doing cross investments, uh, not doing irrelevant uh, diversification, um, uh, and emphasis on spend, but rightful spend. So we saw recently, uh, you know, uh, Sir from Deepam uh, clearly emphasized all these points, and that went very well. And now it's followed with actions. You saw some buybacks announced in few of the cases, um, and that's what the catalyst is. Um, so I think ownership was less. There was a lot of apathy. Undervaluation was there, but it was not enough. When it got uh, and catalyst with the government commitment. And when we see that followed up with actions um, demonstrably, I think markets will definitely uh, uh, take a note of it. And based on each of the stocks and fundamentals, uh, they would move up. Sure. So, Sanjay, where within PSUs do you hunt? Because there is the larger PSU gamut, and then within that, PSU banks are, uh, you know, one segment which has really been catching the fancy of the markets, led, of course, by the big boy SPI. Yeah, so I, you're right. We'll, 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 we'll separate two things. One is the banking PSUs and the non-banking PSUs. So in the non-banking PSUs, um, some of the businesses in utility is the largest leader there. Very strong fundamentals moving into renewals. Uh, hence, ROEs will move up. They would grow at five times uh, dividend yields of you know uh, six to eight percent. And uh, you know they also announced a small buyback. So that is one. You have one in transmission utility. Very very uh, good track record with good ROEs, and it would have seven to ten percent growth and good dividend yields again. That look attractive. Uh, Refining and marketing companies, uh, I think uh, one of them is in a divestment process. Um, uh, one of them, uh, uh, the rest of them are not, but very clearly uh, you saw one of them announcing a buyback. So I think that basket per se and all the right reforms have fallen in place in, in oil and gas over the last five years. There's no backtracking there. You're seeing regular price increases, no intervention from the government. These are very good dividend yields. The refining margins, there's no expectation. There's actually expectation that refineries will make losses. It's only the marketing margins, which are what is implied in the current price. And these are all at, again, four, four and a half times. We have it, uh, yields, dividend yields of five, six, seven percent. 
and would have reasonable growth rate. Um, uh, in some of these cases, the capital allocation that they do have back-ended returns uh, because the projects have a payback which is longer. Uh, but I, we think there are a lot of changes may happen once the divestment goes through because the new owner would have a very different capital allocation process and that could actually further create value. Uh, and that would occur well for the whole basket. So that's one area where you can look at it. Then, of course, there are some of the shipbuilding companies uh, where there is undervaluation. Some of the uh, defense companies, their leaders are there with very strong order book and very reasonable dividend yield. There also we think there is an valuation uh, mismatch and there's an undervaluation. So we believe that you need to pick up the right bottom-up stock see the fundamentals, uh, see that there is capital efficiency and growth. Um, and then, you know, if there are leaders in the sectors um, and they clearly uh, have the longevity, uh, then uh, they should be looked at. That's the way our approach is to PSUs. Um, on the banks, uh, you know, the largest PSU bank, uh, we really believe had a lot of strengths uh, and we've never seen such undervaluation at lower levels, uh, you know, at almost uh, uh, 180, 200, uh, the price, the PPOP was equal to the market cap, the core market cap X of subsidiaries. So we believe, uh, and it is a very strong franchise, very well covered. In an India recovery, when the recovery happens, it is a very strong chance of re rating from here as well. Um, for the rest of them, we will have to be the, we at least feel that only the larger ones. It has to be looked at. The undervaluation there is larger, but it would definitely depend on how well they're covered, how well they're capitalized, um, and the roadmap for ROA and ROE. Uh, there has to be a right roadmap, even if it is FY23. If the change is right, then I think uh, there, there is some scope for even the larger PSUs, PSU banks to be looked at. Sanjay, you're focusing on the larger ones. Um, there are select few there. What about the broader uh, broader basket of PSU names? Uh, would you then clearly avoid those? Uh, you know, the reasons why you feel they're just going to uh, lag behind perhaps? No, so, you know, we, we, we are selective. Um, there are certain businesses and uh, the, within the PSU space, as I said, the utilities, the oil and gas, oil and refining and marketing companies, uh, where we think the strengths, uh, it's not going to overnight lose market share. Uh, there's a clear opportunity. Um, and only one more thing I want to add is this ESG concerns uh, refrains a lot of global investors not to invest in this. Uh, we, uh, we don't have a mandate not to invest as of now. Um, so in a balanced portion with the right mix, that also has led to significant undervaluation and opportunity. Uh, I mean, a leading mining company, uh, you know, its market cap uh, is 70,000 crores. Uh, it has cash and accruals that it will get over a period of time because of this delayed payments uh, would be 35, 40,000 crores and its next year EBITDA would be 20,000 crores. So at one and a half time EBITDA, one and a half to two times EV EBITDA, I think there's very, very high level of undervaluation. So we would pick up pockets and we are owning it in our funds. Um, you know, I'll be very candid. So, but only thing is that they have to be rightly allocated appropriately. Another thing I want to also say is that if you take the interest rates today, um, and if you want to deploy in fixed deposits, what is your post-tax return? Versus these companies at dividend yields of 5 to 12%, uh, 5 to 12%, that dividends are sustainable. There will be growth rates, maybe 0, 5, 10% based on the companies you have. And you you fairly sure, reasonably sure, you can never say 100% sure, of no major capital risk. So even if you were to put some money to allocation on this as a basket, I think there are good dividend real plays plus some returns is what we think uh, is a likely possibility.
Um, Sanjay, just wanted to, you know, get in your view as to what the outlook will be in terms of the overall privatization as well of uh, some of these PSU banks moving in that direction. And do you think that overall basis, the kind of assessment that you have on PSU banks, that one would tend to remain very selective within the space as a whole? Yeah, so, you know, we've heard a lot of seniors, uh, the ex-governors, uh, very senior people in the banking system, uh, telling that uh, there is a need to privatize and uh, the government can't keep infusing capital ad infinity. Um, and uh, while it is very politically sensitive, uh, but with this government, uh, there is a possibility uh, that some of the banks, not the larger ones, but some of the mid-sized ones uh, can be put on the block. Um, and uh, uh, if if it is rightly followed up with reforms, uh, uh, you know, in terms of giving the flexibility on operational managements uh, and giving them flexibility, the managements are high class, but they need to be given flexibility. And if it is followed by a divestment in few of the mid-sized PSU banks, it will derate the whole PSU pack. Uh, but uh, we need to have demonstrable um, evidence of that, uh, that uh, is yet, I and mean, it's a politically sensitive thing. And uh, it's too early, according to me, to take a call whether government will do it. But logically, what we see them as a series of reforms, this is a very logical step they can go through uh, by divesting at least one or two of them uh, in the mid-size space. Thank you for taking time out and joining in and just giving us a lot more clarity on what's going on within the PSU banking space, the triggers for the kind of rally that we've witnessed as well as where opportunity really lies.